What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for some more content for you guys. We're going to be delving deep into transfer targets for each specific position that Tottenham are looking in, and we're doing a series of videos. And first up, we're going to be talking about centre-backs. So we've picked out six players who Spurs can realistically target this transfer window, and we'll see what we make of them. And the first one that we're going to look at is Pau Torres of Villarreal, a player that Spurs have been linked with a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, he's uh, can play on the left-hand side. He's got a market value through transfer market of 45 million euros, 26 years of age, and currently plays at Villarreal. So what would he bring us if we were to sign him? Um, I think he's really good on the ball. That's his speciality. He's really composed. He's really good at with his progressive passing. He um, performs very well in those metrics. Um, obviously, when it comes to um, the physicality and off the ball, that's maybe where the reservations come and maybe why no one's pulled the trigger on Pau Torres. He's a regular um, player for the Spanish national team as well. Um, performed very well when Villarreal got to the semi-finals of the Champions League a couple of years ago. Um, I think he would play. I think Boss Cogley would like him, and I think he would play quite well in the system. But whether he would settle in the Premier League, I guess that's the reservations with his physicality. Yeah, with Spurs looking to play a high line, um, I would think like you would need a really quick defender to complement Romero. Does he have that pace? He's not. He's not the quickest, to be honest. He's. I wouldn't say he's like of the level of Longley or Dyer when it comes to his pace. I think he's quicker than them, but. I would say that he isn't the quickest defender, so you would have to make up for that in some other ways. Mm. So what are we saying? Would you like Pau Torres? I personally would. I think he'd be a, a good player for us. I think um, the only thing is, price-wise, he's fairly expensive. Um, are there cheaper options, potentially? As well, age-wise, 26, you, you're signing him to be your main centre-back, so you have to have full faith in him. Um, I think he's a good bet. I don't think um, I don't have as many reservations, but I do have a bit about his pace. He's not the quickest, but I think we could do a lot worse than him. Mm. I kind of agree. I think, like, he would be a good asset for Spurs, better than what we have, obviously, currently on that left-hand side. But I am wary of um, someone like Pau Torres, who's been touted about to move from Villarreal quite a bit for the past two, three years. And no one's really pushed a boat out on him and really gone and tried to sign him. I mean, he's been linked with top clubs, you know, the likes of Chelsea at times, Liverpool at times, Spurs uh, many a time. But it's just interesting why he hasn't had that move. But I guess he is only 26 still. Yeah, he's not... He's not um, old, but he's not exactly that young at 26. But as a centre-back, you know? Yeah, you could, you could argue he's got many years, many good years left ahead of him as a centre-back as well. Um, I think I would, that would be, he would be one of my top choices, to be honest. All right, let's move on. And who else are we going to be talking about? <laughs> Next up is Roger Ibanez of Roma, 24 years of age, 30 million euro transfer market. Uh, value, uh, a very big hothead, gets a lots of bookings, lots of fouls. And I kind of fear, like, if he was to play alongside Romero, what would actually happen in that back line uh, week in, week out? And it also rings alarm bells to me a little bit where they've signed a replacement in Evan and Dika, which we actually should have gone for, and we're just taking, like, Roma rejects kind of thing. I wouldn't call him a reject. I think that's a bit much. I think he's been a consistent performer for them for many, for a few years. He's still 24 at a good age as well. Um, I actually think he has scope to grow. He does need to, you do need to harness him a bit. You do, need, you do need to rein him in a bit. But in terms of his defensive ability, really strong. I think he's a better defender than Pau Torres. On the ball as well, he's progressive. He, he's good at um, breaking the lines. He can um, bring the ball forward as well. And I think when it comes to, off the ball, like his pace and stuff like that, he is a bit better than um, Pau Torres, but he's also quite rash. W um, picks up a lot of bookings, uh, can get into a lot of confrontations, might pick up the odd red card here and there. Um, and to partner him with Romero would be um, would be interesting, put it that way. But I do think he has a, there's definitely a very good defender out there, and at 24, I think, could grow into a top defender. Mm, yeah, I mean... I like him at times when I see him, but I just think like him and Romero would just be a recipe for disaster, playing them together. Two um, massively aggressive defenders. I kind of feel like Ibanez as well. I mean, I think his stats for like clearances and heading is awesome, um, I, I believe, when, when I last looked him up. But I feel like he might be suited more to like a, a low block Jose team than maybe a front footed high line team than like Ange Postacoglu would like to play. Yeah, I think like someone like Paul Torres is definitely better than him on the ball, for sure. Um, and I think he, he 
the man defending may, maybe suits him. Maybe he likes to be in that battle a bit, mu- a, a bit more than maybe playing the high line. But maybe he could be coached into that. That's something he hasn't played too much of under Jose. And maybe under Postacoglu, that could be something that can... Um, that could be brought out of him. He's definitely a talented defender, in my opinion. Um, right now, uh, Pau Torres, and maybe there are other players who are better than him, but he definitely has potential, for sure. I think if you're, if I'm going to judge the two, for the football that we're going to be playing, I think I would prefer Pau Torres over, mm. um, over Ibanez, that's for sure. But let's move on and let's talk about Leon Castillo Luqueba. 20 years of age, got a market value of 20 million plays for Leon. like I said. Uh, a very talented defender coming through the ranks at Leon. Leon apparently are going through a bit of financial difficulties as well, so it's something that maybe we could take advantage of. But what's your opinion on Luqueba? I mean... He's 20 years of age. He's played 34 games this season for Lyon. He's really broken into the team and been a, a, a fixture in that team. He's really played a maturity, but he plays with this um, kind of aggression and kind of uh, front... Um, forward-thinking nature, a bit similar to Romero. He very much anticipates things mm. um, early. He doesn't like to wait for things. He's one of those centre-backs center who likes to get in front of things rather than, rather than wait. And he plays with that, this confidence, which is very rare for a 20-year-old, for sure. But, again, being 20 and having all these abilities, I think it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be a learning curve. He comes to Tottenham and being in the Premier League, you're going to have to just expect mistakes and expect him to learn from them and kind of move forward from that. So it's whether we allow him that patience and allow him to get that out of the system what is, is to, and whether the fans, more importantly, can be patient with him um, as to whether he can be a success. I'd much rather probably sign him to be like in a rotation to um, a starter but then you could argue that could hamper his progress. But he is still only 20, so he's got a lot of years ahead of him. I'm, I, I think he's got so much potential, but he's still very young for a centre. Yeah, I have seen him play a couple of times, and I like the look of him. I really do. Um, but I kind of feel like if we're going to sign someone for big money that's going to come and partner Romero, it's got to be someone that complements Romero with their skill set as opposed to having a similar skill set, if you know what I mean. And I think Luke Bar probably does have somewhat similar skill sets to Romero, and I'd like to see what it would be like with both of them playing together mm. at the back. I don't think Luke Bar, though, is one of those overly aggressive players that picks up loads and loads of bookings, though. No, he's he's aggressive, but he's not one of those where he's just going to commit loads and loads of fouls. He's actually aggressive in a way where he's smart with his aggression. So it could work. Yeah, and I think having... But, but you, in a way, you still have like two kind of defenders who are not waiting for things, who are being very proactive with their defending and shutting down scenarios and counterattacks when they when they come. So I think as much as you can get caught out, I think the pros is that you're probably going to cut out a lot more than you get caught out. Yeah, potentially, but I do feel like kind of alongside Romero, you need that maybe a calming presence that can... Um that can sweep things aside at the back as well, as opposed to if you've got two really aggressive defenders and they both uh, get caught out. I mean, if you've got one aggressive defender and one kind of more reserved defender that's got a lot of pace that can do a lot of recovery, then I think that can work. I'm not sure what Lukeba's pace is like. He's fast. So if he's fast, then I think it can work. He's definitely fast. Um, I think it's one of those where... I don't know if I'll sign him to be our starter right now, but I'll definitely sign him. That's the thing. I'll definitely Mm. sign him and give him game time. But whether... I would, whether I trust him to be starting week in, week out right now is another question. I think we'll ship quite a few goals early on, especially. But if we're patient with it, it definitely could be something that works. But, but Romero would have to be the more mature leader. Which yeah, is that's the thing. That's the thing. And when I'm judging Luqueba against the other two defenders, Ibanez and, and Pau Torres, I actually think... I would prefer to sign Lukeba over Pau Torres just because of um, his ceiling that he can get. And um, maybe next season when you're judging the two players, maybe Pau Torres can offer us a bit more mm. um, in the team. But I think when you're looking at a long-term project, when you're looking at the next three, four years, I think Lukeba could be the one, uh, to and, be honest. And if Leon have money troubles, I mean, if we can get a good deal out of it, that could be something very interesting. Absolutely. Let's move on to the fourth player we're going to be looking at today, and that is Mark Guehi of Crystal Palace, 22 years of age, market value of 35 million euros. We've spoken about him so much on this channel. He's been linked with Spurs um, quite heavily for the past year. Uh, English, so he fills in with that quota. I think he's a very talented defender, but I think he's still got a lot of uh, developing to do. 
Yeah, he's still quite young. He's got a lot of Premier League experience for his age, which is a big positive. I don't, I don't think he's that good on the ball right now, which is um, something that he's going to have to develop under Ange if he's going to become someone who's a, um, um, someone who's a stalwart in his kind of starting eleven. And for the kind of money we're going to be paying for him, I think we're going to be expecting him to be our number one centre back or number two to Romero essentially. So again, it's going to be a case of um, allowing him to make mistakes on the ball and and because he's just he hasn't shown at Palace yet I think he has it in him but I don't think he's shown at Palace that he's like someone who's for a centre-back very good on the ball yet I think I still think he's quite raw off the ball that's where he's got his big advantage he's strong he's fast he's really good in the tackle he's very good off the ball and I think he could help pen teams in with his um with his physicality but on the ball I think he's got a lot of work to do. So whether you want to spend the 50 or so million it will take to get him with, with knowing that is a big question mark. I've got a feeling Mark Gwethi can explode in the Premier League. I've got a feeling that he's got the skill sets and he's got the talent to be one of uh, the Premier League's leading centre-backs. I really believe that. I think I've, I've got um, a lot of time for Mark Gwethi. And I think that if he was to come in and you know have a year under Ange Postacoglu for his development alongside a Christian Romero at the back, I think it will do the world of wonders for him. And I think actually he's got skill sets that can really complement Kuti Romero at the back as well. So it would be a steep price you're going to pay for him, but you're paying for um, a British uh, national as well, getting in England caps at the moment, getting called up for England. So I actually would, out of all the defenders on the list, I think... It's between Lukeba and Gwehi, but I might just just um, side with Gwehi just a little bit. You spend the extra. I think I would. I think I would. I think he's more ready to come into the starting lineup than a, than a Lukeba is. Albeit, I would love to sign both of them to be honest. But you're talking about a massive outlay. Yeah. Massive outlay. Well, so Ali Gold's saying we need. We're going to look for two. Yeah, centre-backs yeah, but least. I don't think are we going to spend that much money on on two centre backs? I don't. Which is know. why I wouldn't go for Gwehi. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have the big outlay. I'd rather have two of good quality rather than one really good one and maybe, I don't know, one less one potentially. But I, I like Gwehi. I think he's got a big future ahead of him. Right now, I think it might be just good right defender, wrong time kind of thing. Um, and also, I do think he needs a lot of work to work in an Ange system in terms of his on-the-ball quality. And I think there are better, definitely better defenders on the ball. Also, and in just in terms of the outlay, I would avoid it for now. I really believe in his quality, and I think like if we if we were to get him in, I think people will see him in a, in a different light, and I think his development over the next few years is going to be really big, mm. really big. But let's move on. Let's talk about Wolves. Is Max Kilman, age twenty six, market value twenty five million euros on transfer market, a player that's really strong on the ball. I think that he actually improved a bit after Lopetegui came in to Wolves, albeit he did have a bit of a poor season before Lopetegui was there. He had a stunning season, was it two years ago now, uh, in the Premier League, when everyone was talking about him when he was breaking through there. What do you make out of him? Um, I'm a fan of Kilman's. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I actually think he started last season poorly and then under Lopetegui grew into the season and Bayern had a quite a strong finish. I think on the ball, he's got really good uh, carrying ability to bring the ball into midfield. Um, I think his passing ability is pretty decent. He's quite a tall player, so he's quite um, he's got good ability in the air as well. Um, and he's quite a decent defender. The only big drawbacks... Uh, again, he's not the quickest. He's not the the most mobile of defenders when it comes to running um, towards um, his own goal. And um, in the wide areas, potentially, you could you could um, get into sticky areas. But I think he's not the, he's not that slow. I think he's he's got decent recovery if he's partnered with a pacey defender as well. And I like him on the ball. So I actually think he's probably right now more suited to playing for Ange than someone like Guehi. But I think Guehi obviously has the ears on him, already has physicality, and it's a lot easier to coach Guehi to play football on the ground than it is to coach Kilman to have the physicality mm. that Guehi does. Yeah, the thing is... I. Uh... I like Kilman. I liked him a lot more a couple of years ago when he was first breaking through. I mean, this season, as much as he did get better under Lopetegui, I'm not fully convinced, uh, to be honest. And I think if you're gonna, if I'm gonna compare the two players, Guehi and uh, Kilman, I think I'd prefer uh, Guehi to come in. To be honest, I think his his skill set could kind of complement Romero a bit better than Max Kilman. Uh, but albeit Max Kilman is brilliant on the ball, he really is. That's where his strongest assets lie. I'm just not sure if he's strong enough in his other assets uh, to really come to Tottenham and make a success out of himself. 
Um, but let's move on to the next one that we're going to talk about, and that is I am. Mer- I am Eric Laporte of Manchester City, 28 years of age, 30 million market value on transfer market. And this one is is the one that everyone should want. I mean, and he's a he's a top world class defender, plays week in, um he plays for Spain every time they uh they come around and He's just been unlucky at Man City with the sheer talent that they have over there not to get more game time this year. And every time he has played for Man City, he's been brilliant for them. He can get found out a little bit uh, playing the high line. But I think like if you were to play Laporte and Romero together, I think Laporte is actually one of the best defenders that can go and compliment Romero for what he does. Yeah, and he's uh, he'll be perfect for what Ange wants in terms of his um, composure on the ball, his ability to play forward passes. He's done that in his sleep pretty much for Man City for many, many years. Um, Man City have kind of tended to go for more physical defenders of, of late rather than more, more technical defenders, which is maybe why he's been left out more recently, um, which is a bit unlucky. But I think he'd be a brilliant addition. The only the only um, problem with this one is where we can convince him to come with maybe other clubs, but bigger clubs right now circling and potentially going for him. It's whether we can maybe... Um, jump in ahead of our ahead of the competitors and, and get him to sign. It's going to be a big ask, considering you know finished eighth last season, and whether he we can convince him that Tottenham is a project he can believe in. You know, you could have Barcelona, you could have other teams circling around him potentially. So that could be a difficult task. But he is our favourite Man City. I do think he's probably looking to leave this summer. And if, and in the Premier League, maybe we can convince him so that that if we maybe if we can convince someone like a Madison or something, maybe he can start to believe there is a project at Tottenham. Yeah, I mean, I look, I do think it will take a lot of convincing to get Laporte to Tottenham. Uh, some say it's like borderline unrealistic to get Laporte to Tottenham, but I think um, you can get it done um, if you sell a good project to him. When you're looking at the clubs around Europe that might take him. I don't think Bayern Munich take him now uh, because of their fully stocked at centre back. About to get Kim Min Jae. Uh, exactly, about to get Kim Min Jae. Um, when you're looking in the Premier League, Man United are fully stocked at centre back. Uh, Chelsea potentially, um, Arsenal. I think they're fully stocked there. PSG potentially. Um, Barcelona, the one that he's been linked with. I think like I don't think they can afford him to be honest. You that's never know. The, that's, yeah, it's true. You do never know with Barcelona, but like they're crying about these financial problems every time and they just keep spending money. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how long that's sustainable for. I don't think Laporte is going to go to Barcelona, to be honest. And Real Madrid, I think, is probably off the table for him. So, I mean, there are, I think he is running out of clubs a little bit, but I do think Tottenham could be a really good project for him. And he would be my absolute number one choice. I think, I believe in his talent more than anyone that we've spoken about on this list yes uh, he's he's an older kind of player that we have spoken about but I think like when you've got him and Romero together he comes in as that more experienced one and that calmer head and the one that can maybe guide Romero through games as Mm. opposed to Romero guiding a younger player through games and I think that will stand us in really good stead yeah I'd I'd love him through the door I think he's an excellent defender I think he's been brilliant at Man City Um, it's just whether it's realistic that we can actually bring him in yeah well those are our six targets so let's rank them so obviously we're going to put Laporte number one Laporte is my number one choice yeah um, it's going to be my number one as well number two um, I'm not sure between Lukeba and Guehi for my number two I think I'm just going to side with Lukeba because I think the what he can grow into probably outweighs what Guehi can can grow into even though I do really believe in Guehi so I'm going to put Lukeba at number two I'm going to put Pau Torres is my number two. Pau Torres. I'm going to put Pau Torres is my number two. Number just, th- yeah, because I think he's similar to Laporte in a lot of ways. Mm, fair enough. Um, in terms of number three, who are you going to put number three? I'm going to put Lukeba as my number three. Lukeba is your number three. I'm not sure between Guehi or Pau Torres. I think I'm actually going to put Guehi ahead of Pau Torres at number three. Guehi ahead of Pau Torres. Yeah, he's my number three. I'm going to put, so on number four, I'm going to have Kilman. Um, as my number four number only because I think he's more suited right now to Andrew and I think price wise you're probably getting a fairly decent price compared to Guehi and maybe you can spend that on another centre back as well yeah good shout at number four I'm going to put Pal Torres um, like I said before I think he's a good defender I just rate the other defenders just that bit more higher than him at number five who have we got left we've got Kilman and Ibanez left so at number five I'm going to put Kilman 
I'm going to put, what do I have left? I've got Guehi and Ibanez. I'm going to put Guehi and then Ibanez. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to put Kilman and then Ibanez at the bottom. So we both put Ibanez at the bottom and we mm. both put Laporte at the top, but we've just had a, a different two to five. But let me know in the comment section below who are your one to six for the defenders that we have picked out for you guys today. Those are our six centre-back transfer targets. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.